Hi, I'm Nick. I'm here with Hot Pepper Theater, and I'm going to be reviewing Hecuba by the ancient Greek tragedian Euripides. But first, because I hate myself, I'm going to eat this habanero pepper. Why did I come back? Okay. <laughs> so, Hecuba by Euripides is a really phenomenal play by probably the premier playwright of ancient Athens and is really stunningly not well known today, uh, which is really kind of incredible to me because it's such a great play. It's set right after the fall of Troy, much like his much more famous play, The Trojan Women. But unlike The Trojan Women, uh, so stuff actually happens in Hecuba, and the women are given narrative agency, and they get to do things rather than just being sad about how awful it is to be a woman at the end of a war you lost in ancient Greece. Whew. So, the Greeks have started to sail for home, and they've landed in, I think it's Thrace? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's Thrace. And uh, we meet the ghost of Hecuba's last and youngest son, Polyd Polydorus, and he's been living in Thrace with the king of Thrace, and he's just been killed because uh, Hecuba and her husband Priam sent him there so that he could be safe from the war, uh, and he could live there, and they gave him a bunch of gold, and that was a terrible idea, because then when Troy fell, the king of Thrace was just like, I'll take that, and then he kills Polydorus, and Polydorus is super sad, so he's a ghost, and he tells us what the play is, and tells us what we're about to see, and it's great. Then Hecuba shows up, the women of Troy show up, Odysseus shows up, and we find out that the winds aren't coming, and they're stuck in Thrace, and everyone's really upset, except maybe the women, because they don't really want to go to Greece. But all the Greeks are really upset, because they can't go home until the winds show up, and Achilles has appeared over his tomb, and he demands a virgin girl be sacrificed at his tomb, which is kind of messed up, and everyone's like, didn't we do this at the start of the Trojan War? And it wasn't that kind of a bad idea with that whole Iphigenia thing, but uh, most people, including Odysseus, are like, we should do it anyway. So they take Hecuba's daughter, Polyxena, and they kill her. And it's very tragic. And we don't actually see her death because it's a Greek play, but we hear about it off stage, and she, like, takes her top off because apparently the Greeks thought that was noble. And then they kill her, and it's very sad. And everyone's very sad. And the wind still doesn't come, and that's super important, and we'll get to that later. So then Hecuba's sad and Polyxena is dead, and Polydorus is dead, but she doesn't know that yet, and they give her back her body because all of the Greeks thought Polyxena was super impressive the way she took her top off and then let them kill her. And then, right when they go to bury Polyxena, they find Polydorus's body because the king of Thrace threw him into the sea and he washes up right where Hecuba is staying because gods work that way, hence ancient Greece. Um, so, they know Polydorus uh, is dead, and Hecuba is very upset about that, and she figures out that Poly Polynester, the king of Thrace, has killed him, and she's really mad. And fortunately, Polynester happens to be going by right then, so Hecuba talks to Agamemnon, who's the head of the Greek army, and is like, Polynester has really screwed me here, so I need your help. Don't interfere. And he's like, I don't really know what to do about this, but I'm sleeping with your daughter, so I guess sure. And then they trick Polynester and all of his sons into coming into the tent, and then... Spoiler alert, Hecuba and all of the women of Troy kill all of Polynester's sons and then blind Polynester with their hairpins. And then he comes crashing out of the tent like an animal, crawling around on all fours, bleeding from his face as blood soaks into the ground and the winds finally pick up. So, and, and Agamemnon is like, this seems fair to me and it doesn't hurt me, so whatever. Um, so, it's a great play. It's much better than the Trojan Women, which is also by Euripides, and everyone does it, and I don't know why, because the women don't get to really do anything except be sad. Um, so, that play's done. Uh, Hecuba by Euripides. You should read it. You should particularly read uh, the translation by Anne Carson in Grief Lessons, for plays by Euripides. That's one I read and prefer. Um, what else about it? It's great. It's... It's... It's a really good play that gives women agency in a time when Euripides was basically the only person ever doing that ever. I give uh, 
Hecuba by Euripides, or Hecube if you spell it like she does. Uh, five out of five hot peppers, and I give that hot pepper uh, three and a half out of five hot peppers because that was fine. We're done here. That was fine. <laughs> Be sure to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to Butt Hurt Reviews. That's us here at Hot Pepper Theater. Uh, my own website is nicholasorvis.weebly.com. And over here you can see other videos and stuff, interactive stuff all around me, I'm sure.